Good morning everyone! Welcome back to my channel. So today is Sunday. So my residence is already done eating breakfast. So I'm done uh, doing the dishes. So now I'm relaxing because my, my boss said that she's going to buy uh, break, uh, lunch for the residence. So now I am relaxing. So, hi, uh, I am relaxing right now, so uh, I am here listening the Mass, Catholic Mass in Channel 7, so I always do that every Sunday, even I didn't go to church, because I don't have time. Every Sunday I work, so I'm just listening here. Okay. The blessing of the risen Lord coming to us in this wondrous way, remaining with us, not just spiritually, but tangibly and truly. Here we can taste and see the goodness of the Lord, his body and blood, soul and divinity. It is the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist that greatly has impacted the lives of saints for the last 20 centuries. Take, for example, St. John Paul II. He was drawn like a magnet to spend time with Jesus in the Eucharist. Early every morning, long before any other activity, he would slip into the chapel and be absorbed in prayer. And throughout the day, he would return there to be with Jesus, replenishing his heart with the loving presence of the Eucharist, the Redeemer of the world. Why such a strong attraction to the Eucharist? Love. This is love incarnate. This is Jesus. This is where above all other places we encounter him. A short while after his election as Pope, the priest secretary, Father John McGee, a priest from Ireland, couldn't find John Paul II any place in the papal apartment. He looked everywhere, including the chapel, but he found did not find him. And then he decided to return a second time to the chapel. And there he found him laying face down on the floor in front of the Eucharist. It soon became known this, that this new Pope from Poland made all his major decisions before Jesus in the Eucharist. That was the place where he encountered love, where he experienced love profoundly and made it his own, and where he found wisdom to live out faithfully wisely his mission from Christ. Jesus tells us in the gospel today, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. Because Jesus and the Father are one, each dwelling within the other and abiding in the bond of love that is the Holy Spirit, love defines all that God is and all that God does. Jesus in Holy Communion invites us to share with him in the intimate love that he shares with the Father. Moreover, Jesus in the Eucharist compels us to share this love with others. Saint Mother Teresa of Calcutta is a great example of the one who shared this love of Jesus in a remarkable way. She and her sisters were committed to serving the poorest of the poor. And they began by doing this by going to those who were dying in the gutters of the city of Calcutta. They would pick them up and carry them to the home for the dying. 
and there they comforted them until they passed from this world into eternity. Someone asked her, Mother Teresa, why do you do this social work among those who have no chance of survival? Why do you do this when you could be teaching poor children running in the streets and preparing them for a future? And Mother Teresa replied, We do not do social work. We serve Jesus in the poorest of the poor. One day she said, I took a man I found in the street, picked him up, and we brought him to the home for the dying. And when I was leaving, after caring for him, he told me, I have lived like an animal on the streets, but I am going to die like an angel. I will die smiling. So how did Mother Teresa come to see Jesus in the poorest of the poor? It began early every morning a daily hour of adoration of Jesus in the tabernacle, followed by the celebration of the Holy Sacrifice of the Mass. Because she knelt in amazement at Jesus' loving presence at the Eucharist, she could see his face in every person that she met, including the poorest of the poor. It was this Eucharistic amazement opened her eyes and the eyes of her heart to see the wisdom of Jesus' words. Whatever you do to the least of my brothers and sisters, you do to me. Eucharistic and, and amazement and adoration compels us too to works of mercy out of love for Jesus. When we receive Jesus in Holy Communion, when we adore him in the tabernacle, we are changed. We are created anew. We find strength to love Jesus and the most difficult to love. Our hearts become one with his sacred heart. And the presence of Jesus in the Eucharist is more powerful than any other force. More powerful than COVID-19. When we kneel in adoration and amazement before Jesus in the Eucharist, we kneel before the one who suffered death on the cross to open the gates of heaven. We kneel before the one who defeated the power of Satan and atoned for sin and the sins of the whole world. The Eucharist is the fountain where we drink the love of Christ and where we find both the desire and the grace to love whomever he gives us to love that day. So let us pray for the gift of a strong Eucharistic faith that recognizes Jesus present under the form of bread and wine, but him truly present. Let us pray for a faith like the Christian martyrs of the fourth century who said, we cannot go on without the Eucharist. We cannot live without Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and 
by the Holy Spirit, was incarnate of the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you.
sing. Thank you guys for watching. Have a good weekend, everyone. God bless. And stay safe. Bye-bye.